Miss Mary was a 25-year-old English teacher who had been teaching for five years. She was a good teacher, but she was also very strict. She expected her students to work hard, and she didn't tolerate any nonsense. John was a 17-year-old student who was struggling in school. He was smart, but he was also lazy and unmotivated. He didn't care about his grades, and he didn't think that school was important. One day, John's English teacher, Miss Mary, took him aside after class. She told him that she was worried about him. John, can I talk to you for a minute? She asked. Sure, Miss Mary. What's up? John replied. I'm concerned about your performance in this class. You have so much potential, but you're not applying yourself. You're always late, you don't do your homework, and you don't do your homework, and you don't participate in the discussions. Do you realize how important this subject is for your future? John shrugged. Not really. I don't see the point of learning all this stuff. It's boring and useless. Miss Mary sighed. It's not boring and useless, John. It's fascinating and valuable. English is the language of communication, of literature, of culture. It can open so many doors for you if you just give it a chance. John rolled his eyes. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Look, Miss Mary, I appreciate your concern, but I'm fine. I don't need any help. Miss Mary shook her head. You do need help, John, and I'm willing to offer it to you. How about this? Why don't you come to my office after school every day? I can help you with your homework and we can also talk about anything that's bothering you. Maybe I can help you find some motivation and interest in your studies. John was hesitant at first, but he eventually agreed. He started meeting with Miss Mary after school every day. She helped him with his homework and she also gave him advice about his life. As John started to get to know Miss Mary, he realized that she was not only a great teacher, but she was also a wonderful person. She was kind, compassionate, and she always had time for him. Ms. Mary, you're amazing. John said one day, You've helped me so much, not just with English, but with everything. You've made me see things differently. You've made me care. Miss Mary smiled. Thank you, John. That means a lot to me. You've also changed a lot. You've become more responsible, more confident, more curious. You've made me proud. Miss Mary was also starting to develop feelings for John. She was impressed by his intelligence and his determination. She also found him to be very attractive. One day, after John had made a particularly big improvement in his schoolwork, Miss Mary took him aside. She told him that she was proud of him and that she was glad that she had been able to help him. John, I have something to tell you, she said. What is it? John asked. I'm proud of you. She repeated. You've done so well in this class. You've improved so much. Thank you, thank you, John said. But there's something else. Miss Mary continued. What, what? I... I love you. John gasped. He couldn't believe what he had just heard. You, you love me? He asked. Mary said softly. John looked into her eyes and saw the truth in them. He felt a surge of emotion in his chest. He loved her too. He reached out and pulled her into his arms. I love you too, he whispered. They kissed passionately and it was the most magical moment of their lives. John and Miss Mary knew that their love was forbidden, but they didn't care. They were meant to be together and they were going to fight for their love. They continued to see each other in secret. They knew that if anyone found their relationship, they would be in trouble, but they didn't care. They spent every moment together, sneaking out of school, meeting in park, going to the movies, having picnics, walking on the beach, watching the stars, holding hands, hugging, kissing, making love. They shared their hopes and dreams, their fears and doubts, their joys and sorrows, their secrets and confessions. They supported each other, they understood each other, they completed each other, 
They were happy and free and in love. One day, they decided to take their relationship to the next level. They wanted to make love in a special place that would always remind them of their love. They choose the library where they first met and where they had spent many hours studying and talking. They waited until everyone had left and then snuck into the library with a blanket and a candle. They found a secluded spot behind a bookshelf and laid down the blanket on the floor. They lit the candle and placed it on a nearby table. They looked into each other's eyes and smiled. They kissed softly and then deeply. They undressed each other slowly, caressing and kissing every inch of skin they revealed. They whispered sweet words of love and admiration in each other's ears. They felt their hearts beating in sync and their bodies trembling with desire. They joined together in a passionate embrace, moving in harmony and rhythm. They felt a wave of ecstasy wash over them, filling them with bliss and joy. They floated together, holding each other tight and moaning each other's names. They cuddled together on the blanket, feeling the warmth and comfort of each other's presence. They felt happy and free and in love. John and Mary continued to see each other in secret. They knew that if anyone found out about their relationship, they would be in trouble but they didn't care. One day, John and Miss Mary decided to run away together. They packed their bags and bought two tickets to Hawaii. They wanted to start a new life in paradise where no one would judge them or separate them. They left a note for their families. Dear mom and dad, we're sorry for what we're about to do, but we have no choice. We love each other more than anything in the world and we can't live without each other. We know that you won't understand and that you'll be angry and disappointed, but we hope that one day you'll forgive us and accept our love. We're leaving town and we don't want to say where we're going. We'll be happy as long as we're together. Please don't try to find us or stop us because it won't work. We're adults and we can make our own decisions. We love you, but we love each other more. Goodbye, John and Mary. They took a taxi to the airport where they boarded the plane. They sat next to each other holding hands and smiling. They felt happy and free. They didn't worry about the consequences of their actions. They only cared about each other. They kissed and whispered words of love in each other's ears. They felt their hearts beating in sync and their bodies trembling with excitement. They couldn't wait to land in Hawaii and start their new life together. They were so absorbed in each other that they didn't notice the turbulence. They didn't hear the pilot's announcement. They didn't see the panic on the faces of the other passengers. They didn't realize that something was wrong till it was too late. The plane had a mechanical failure and was losing altitude fast. It was heading towards a mountain range and there was no way to avoid it. The pilot tried to make an emergency landing, but it was impossible. The plane crashed into the mountains, exploding into flames. John and Mary died instantly never letting go of each other's hands. They never made it to Hawaii. They never got to start their new life together. They never got to be happy and free, but they died in love.